fucking Brazilians, dude. That sounds about right. Who? Who's Brazilians? Go penis. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the type of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's too much cat cum in there. Should be, should be alive. Hey, hey, we made it again. Yo. Uh, buddy, talk to these hoes while I share the fucking link. You know what I mean? If you guys are into war metal, what would your war metal band name be? <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> Guess what the fuck ours is? <laughs> We're going to tell you right now, god damn it, it's fucking Goose Hammer. And Goose Hammer is a big, huge goose cock. And Tony Goosecock doesn't like <laughs> nobody. Goose Tony Goosecock? <laughs> He's a fucking football coach for the 49ers. Yeah, he sure is, man. I don't know he if sure he really is, is but uh, who's a, who cares? Oh, we're live right now. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's up, YouTube? How we doing? Pull your Goose Hammer out. I'm about to share this fucking goose. video. Nobody's watching. Let's get this shit on social media. Hey, you know I'm saying let's media this shit right here. Goose. Oh Goose boy! Hammer. Um, yum, 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 yum. All right, shared it on that. Meow mix, Let's meow get mix, on pick the up death sticks. metal dicks thing here. Uh, live now. Type that out. Try my fucking hammer. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just the way she fucking goes. The goose is a hammer that I've always known. Uh, goose hammer is a goose bow. Goose hammer. We've pretty much just been laughing at the word goose hammer for a good half an hour now. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, man, we're happy to be here. Happy to get into this podcast. Just one more place. I'm going to toss it in the group real quick. And then we'll be fucking really The goose sure group. In. Hammer of the goose. Slam it in your caboose. All right, yeah, YouTube, we're doing John Wayne Gacy, part three, if you're just tuning in. Hey, unfortunately, it took a lot of work to do our parody song this week. You will definitely hear it on the podcast, so that gives you incentive to tune in if you watch this right here. I'm going to miss that, but we got a great episode coming your way as soon as we get into the midst of recording it. Glad to have you aboard. Thanks for watching on YouTube. We like that. It's like a treat. You know, you get the episode early, you get to hang out with me and Buddy. Mark's got such a professional setup here in the Cantankerous Media Group studio. You know what I mean? Or the Goosehammer studio. Oh, man. Dude, why didn't we think of that before you named your thing? Because Goosehammer is a real cool. It's just a fucking, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fucking hammer handle hey, with I'm, a goose dick as a symbol. <laughs> that's my, that's going to be my rap name, dude. Hey, man, go ride a fucking I head. know you said it first, dude, but I got to be Goosehammer. Hey, man, yeah. Yeah. I gotta be Goose Hammer, dude. You are Goose Hammer. I'm Goose Hammer. That's fucking. That's how it goes. I'm fucking sex pig. What? Is, it, is that playing on your phone? Yes. I forgot we have YouTube Red. So cool. All right. You're Goose Hammer. I'll be sex pig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm about to quit podcast and I'm about to quit comedy and just only SoundCloud rap. That's it. That's all the thing. I need, like man. it a lot more. <laughs> sex pig. Yeah, man. That's it. I heard that popping noise. But I guess we're not recording, so who gives a shit? Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, guys. Uh, we're about ready to start this live podcast. You already know what it is. If you're tuned into the YouTube production right now, you're just watching us record our podcast, which this week is John Wayne Gacy, part number three. Yep. And you know what I like and enjoy? A black box. <laughs> <laughs> wine that i don't know man you know that's a double entendre was that cheap was it cheaper than uh the no, other it was, one it was a cool 20 yeah yeah what it's, made you pick that it's, over Boda? um this is actually better man you think so i i i don't think i've tried that one i like it better i got you man, man it's i like that organic motherfucker but i just can't think of the stupid name of it right now it's good though shout outs to them they ain't paying a stick so whatever uh man i'm ready to record this motherfucker let's do it yeah pube time Hey, so before you click, so you'll be able to edit that song back in. Okay. So I can just go, welcome to Death Metal Dicks. Yep. We're doing it. Cool. Just want to make sure. All right. Yep. So whenever you're ready, my guy. Welcome inside Goosehammer Studios. Another episode of Death Metal Dicks. <laughs> Part three of John Wayne Gacy, deranged psychopath, killer clown. We told you about his whole life. The crimes, the life, the struggle, the gay sex. John Wayne Gacy. We are back for part three to finish this thing off the right way. We're going to explore the ins and outs 
of the trial, the defense, the prosecution. Bung, 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 bung. In, in this justice system, bung, everybody bung, 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 bung. And you will know by the name bung, and title. Bung, 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 All criminals are proven bung, guilty. Bung, 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 bung. We will see your buttholes in hell. Bung, 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 bung. Goose hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Man, before we get into this, let's start off with the business like we always got to do. First of all, thank you so much for listening to our podcast and making us the number one death metal podcast in all the world. We appreciate you so much for tuning in, even though we're not particularly a death metal podcast, more of a true crime scenario. But we love that you guys listen. We love having fun with you guys, talking to you. If you want to talk to us, the best place to do that at right now, we have got a Facebook group. It's it official. Fucking ripping. It's a ton of fun. Hundreds of people have joined in. Just click that ad button on Facebook, and one of our moderators will give you an approval. Answer a couple of silly questions so we know you're not a robot and going to advertise stuff to us, and you're in. If you like this show, we love to make it for you. We love it. You could definitely help us out. Definitely. Easily. Easily. Get on iTunes or wherever you download this podcast from, hit that five star review. Five stars. And type something in the box. Doesn't matter what it is. You don't have to praise us. We're not trying to get our ego up. We're just trying to get our money right. You know what I'm saying? Type it in the black box. <laughs> black box wine. Black box. Official sponsor of Goose Hammer. It sucks your dick at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that would be so cool. Hey. We're glad to have you aboard is what we're saying. You just give us a five-star review on iTunes. Type anything in the review box. Goose Hammer. Sam Talent sucks. Black box. Black box. <laughs> eat my butt. Whatever. It helps us out a ton. That's how iTunes rating algorithms works. I don't know why, but if you do that, man, it helps us. Hit subscribe. Tell your friends. There's other metal heads out there that don't know about us. There's other true crime heads out there that don't know about us. We're doing something different from everyone else. If you like it, I guarantee some of your friends online do. So spreading the word, that's free, and it helps us a ton. A lot of our fans have been so cool and helped us out infinitely by going to patreon.com and choosing to sponsor us through one of our packages. We're revamping them a little bit right now. Me and Buddy, he doesn't know this yet, but we're going to start recording uh Two live episodes, not live, two bonus episodes a month. Because okay. I can't keep up with that true crime roundup thing. Yeah. I mean, my grandma my grandma fell and broke her pelvis. And uh, she's been in the nursing home. She's got dementia. She's wilding out. So we've been working on that. It's hard for me to keep up with everything. So me and, me and Buddy are just going to start dropping a little short couple bonus episodes that no one Ooh. else will hear. It's a secret. Shh, don't tell nobody. Secret. And that's on patreon.com backslash death metal dicks. Now we've got different tiers of membership you can get in anything from a goddamn dime all the way up helps us tremendously you guys are doing us a huge favor by even looking at it so check that out patreon.com backslash death metal dick see it's something you want to get into some people don't like the idea of a subscription service we totally get that um we got shirts for sale uh we don't have a website put up yet but if you go to patreon.com backslash death metal dicks everyone that is in our 20 dollars tier is getting a shirt they're going to be out next week. We're going to send them out to you. I'm going to post pictures online, so follow us on any social media. If you want a shirt, hit me up. We can sort it out. They're only 17 bucks. Huge Death Metal Dicks logo on the front. Nothing on the back. Old school Death Metal style. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just 17 bucks. That's barely above cost because they're nice shirts. And then whatever it costs to ship it to you, we will certainly do that. We're stoked to have merch finally. And that's because all the people that have listened to us, gone through Patreon to help us out, if you don't like Patreon, you can hit us up on PayPal. If you want to hit us with a one-time donation, deathmetaldicks at gmail.com. We would certainly appreciate that. Me and Buddy both work full-time jobs. we got kids, and we want to give you the most information possible. We want it to be accurate, and we want to have fun. That's why we're due this podcast. We want a community of true crime, metal, fringe society type people that want good information and want to have fun with it. That's what we're all about. And the easiest way for us to do that is to have less responsibility. And the more money we have, the less responsibility we have. <laughs> Woo! Party animals. You know, man, it's like our moms met and they ate each other's pussy and that's how we were born. 
yeah, because neither of us know who our dads are, and they're both pretty strong jawed ladies. So if there was a way to swap that back and forth, I would almost guarantee that our beaver busted moms probably popped them together a time or two. <laughs> <laughs> beaver busters. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, you know what, dude? We did a goddamn show where we figure out like kids are coming to us and they go, I think my mom's gay. And we're called the Beaver, Beaver Busters. Busters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also announcing I'm <laughs> dropping my rap career forever. You could call me Goose Hammer. And I am Sex Pig. We're going to be dropping hot albums. We got somebody working on beats. It's going to come out on SoundCloud, SoundCloud rappers. Plenty of people have gotten famous that way. So, Lord willing, if we do, we're out. Yeah, it's done, dude. <laughs> We're tour Europe and tell everyone here to eat our ass. But hey, I'm so happy to be here with you. One more time, Into the Void with Christopher Pierce. Hey, buddy Lloyd. I forgot to do that for like 500 episodes. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's a fun little jingle. And a tingle in my bingle. <laughs> I pull that boy out and get ready to mingle. Pringles. <laughs> So where we dropped off at, John Wayne Gacy had just been arrested for drug possession. Police raided his house because he had had several complaints against him. A detective had started to piece together the case. You'll remember somebody that was one of the missing kids car ended up in possession of one of John Wayne Gacy's kid employees. Police pulled him over. Asked him how he got the car of the missing kid. He pointed his finger at John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy told police, Oh, I bought the car from him a long time ago. Police, of course, boobed it, titted it, fucked it. Did fucked it? Didn't even look at the title, which John Wayne Gacy had signed. Signatures didn't match, and it was months after the kid had disappeared. So that gave John Wayne Gacy more time, but it started to piece together. Things started to fall apart. Detectives started to put things in motion. Another kid came forward and explained an attack that happened, fingered Gacy. So they finally got their man. They don't have any concrete evidence for murder to stick him on. They had searched around his house, couldn't find anything, but they hadn't done a deep, in-depth, detailed search, even though they had a warrant. So what they did was charge him for drug possession. Sex. Sex drugs. He had a lot of those. Uh, We talked about how they found a ring box that John Wayne Gacy had full of pornographic books, novels, there was one that was modern day pederast. <laughs> they call that sex, drugs, cock and hole. Yeah, yeah, that sure is what they call it. But a big old mess that John McGacy had. He had Valium, pot, chloroform, a hypodermic needle, and an unknown injectable drug. He had fo- he had Polaroid photos of hospitals and pharmacies all around the area. Weird That's thing to have. Yeah, what I think uh well, I'll get into that in a second. So He's in jail for drug possession. Now, this fat fuck, we know that he's had a weak heart since birth. Yeah. But he's also a manipulative shithead. He knows how to lie to people real well. He says that he's short of breath and having chest pains in prison, jail. They take him to the hospital. He gets checked out, released. As he's getting released, the head detective is there to arrest his dumbass for murder. Dumb, dumb. And then that's where we were at last week. They'd already started digging up the bodies. Pull him into prison. Now, once Gacy gets to prison, we talked about this last week, so no reason to drag you back through it. He doesn't admit it right away. He says he killed someone in self-defense. Here's where the body is to throw him off. All the different things to cover up the smell in the house. He's in an interview. Some of the... when some, I'm sure by now you guys have all looked at John Wayne Gacy interviews, especially that last one in prison. The way he talks is hilarious. Oh yeah. He's just, I mean, he's a psychopath and an amazing chef and an amazing chef. The interviews that he gives and, and good fuck the way <laughs> I'm sure he thinks so. God damn. The what things he does, it sounds like he's got some stamina in bed. You're going to have one of those that. boys that just lays on his back and is like, ride me. But the only problem is they're chloroformed up. So he just rocks their hips on his dick. I know that you're saying that because you do that all the time. And I know that you do that all the time because I do that all the time. Yeah, I got out of breath quick. Well, it's, I mean, when you're drinking, dude, you got like a lot of beers in you. You're not even moving yeah. around a lot. And you do the, just gra- yeah, grab the hips and do the old rocking. And how you do that is you chow that fucking ass the and then you pull yeah. them on top of you. Because yeah, yeah, so yeah. like, okay. that takes minimum effort. You know okay, what I mean? I'm ready. Yeah. That's one thing that women, we have a huge women audience. 60%. 
of our listeners identify as female. So something I can tell you, ladies, thank you for listening, naturally. When your man goes down to chow, you think he's taking a lot of extra time being careful, being sensual. Now, that's true. He wants to please you. He wants to make you feel good. He's going the extra mile. And he we enjoy it, too. I love to eat an ass. You know what yeah. I mean? Especially after a long work day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you take him to chow 10. But now I'm telling you, a good 45% of the time, it's out of sheer laziness. We want to get you to essentially the point of climax so we can have as little sex as possible. When we're having our wine, we like your cheese plate. And when we get on that <laughs> cheese plate... <laughs> Boy, I get tired after every cheese plate. If you just <laughs> ride me, yeah. I mean, this is the way the fat dudes rock, but it's good because we eat and yeah. then we skate. Yeah, man. You fucking slide in a quarter or two into the old baloney podium at the Kroger, man. We're fucking ready. <laughs> oh my god, man, that's gross to think about with what John Wayne Gacy was actually doing. And I will apologize for those vivid images pertaining to the subject, but not. Sex pig and goose hammer. We no. ride for the cause. But we will apologize to our wives right now. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm, now, yeah. my wife doesn't listen, so who cares? Now, here's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> John Wayne Gacy, and we've said this before, a lot of serial killers love to be in control. They love people who are in control. They like the idea of what police do. And they also like police. And John Wayne Gacy tries to be a part of the community. He's around cops all the time. He loves them. So he ends up being their best friend, their ally. And he spends hours confessing one by one because that's what police have to do. They need to get all the details, put it in a report, record the conversation for future evidence. He totally agrees to be Mirandized. Remember, we talked about his lawyer said, don't do that. Lawyer comes. He does it. He squeals because he is a fat pig. Gives all the information out, every detail of every single murder. He knows it front and back, all of it to police. And after he gets done, because the thing with people like this is they're super impulsive. They ride waves. John Wayne Gacy is addicted to a certain feeling. Now, usually for him, that feeling comes from murder. So when it comes to just blurting out all of his crimes... He's having a dopamine spike for sure. Yeah. Similar to how he grabs a kid, tortures him, and murders him. Now, more into the trial, we'll get into how this differs from insanity. But when he's doing these crimes, I don't think that he's thinking about it as a person that he's doing it to and then killing. Now, we talked about how his switch flipped on. And when he was in his clown makeup, screaming, I'm going to rape you at that kid. Wow. Which sounds terrifying. But then you look at him. Then you're like, oh, his dick's small. Yeah. Yeah. He's not gonna I, know I would just pull my pants on. Come on, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. I know he's got a little fucking sticker, but he was using dildos a lot. That's no good for the community. Yeah. Loop free. He just loved to rip hole up. And that is a bad look. If you're just a young guy trying to build a shed for John Wayne, you don't want to get caught in that position. But he... Hard to work with hip dysplasia. (laughs) Yeah, he's just getting high off this. He's getting high. It's a drug. It's not a person. It's a drug. You know, if you see any documentary about people or you've known an addict in your life, how they'll do anything that they have to to get to that next high. Well, once they get high, the drug isn't an object and the acts to get the drug aren't an object anymore. It's just that particular feeling. And that feeling that we would say, this is what you get from heroin it's not a reaction to heroin anymore. It's a reaction within their body. It's the dopamine coming out and making their body function the right way. So it's the same thing with him and murder. He can try to keep it together all he wants to. He can't because he's got this addiction that he's got going on and he's doing, of course, nothing to treat it. So he's just impulsive on that level. He's got that reptile reflex. So once the cops give him an ear, he flips that switch on And then he starts talking to them about all the murders and he gets great pleasure out of the adrenaline rush because now he's opening up. You got to think if I think that we finally agree. Okay. That he's not gay. He's fucking gay. Are you going to do this again? Yeah, he's not gay. He likes to kill. That's his sexual fantasy. He wants to pull off all your fantasies. (laughs) But he's fucking gay too, you dumb fuck. Man, he just hates what his dad hates. Oh no, my god! How are, gonna, how are you going to stick with this? I just, I'm just saying. Be, where did you hear this? I didn't. Where did you hear this? I didn't. You came up with this. Nah, man. 
You came up with it. I mean, I had to, yeah, <laughs> but I just think I just think it's just. I a, can't believe we're talking about this again. It's Dude, a thing with killers, man. He was getting also gay prostitutes. Yeah, looking at gay pornography because he saw him as weak, and his dad hated him, and that's why. Whether it's sex with a girl or a guy, <laughs> it's fine, man. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. You are the one person that doesn't think John Wayne Gacy's gay. That's cool, man. That's cool. If somebody's going to agree with me. Though. No, they're not. Hey, I got plenty of people going team buddy fucking about the fucking ass. It's one person. Shit. It is. It is. <laughs> That's all I need. If nobody said team Chris, you ever, you ever seen Twilight before? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> We're splitting sides. You got team Goose Hammer and team Sex Pig. This is ridiculous. <laughs> and it's all over acid bath. Didn't know that Again, one person. <laughs> They're cool though, man. And they're not from the listeners. south. They're not All from right, the south. hey man, I'm. I got no. I'm. If they listened, I'm with it. You can. I would love for everyone to be on Team Sex Pig over here. That's cool. You're enduring. I love you. That's why we make a podcast together. You're just nobody's wrong. on your team. Not even me. I'm glad you're on my shit. You're the last player pick, though. <laughs> Man, you're not wrong. That's how I spent my entire youth. <laughs> Me too. Same as John Wayne Gacy. I guarantee he never got picked for a sports team. In fact, it was the 70s, so I got a feeling that when he went to the baseball field and, you know, it's getting down to that part, you're getting nervous because everyone's picked a person. You know you're going to be the last person picked, but you're just going to stack up until there's someone's going to be like, fine. Yeah. I'll take John but you, Wayne. You always try to sell it like he's the guy picking up the weighted baseball bats, swinging yeah, like five of them. Right. He's like, here's some guys. <laughs> I got the power in my hips. Sure, my fucking heart sounds like a college water bomb, but <laughs> god damn it, I can swing this son of a bitch. <laughs> so, he gets that same high from releasing all the details to police. He tells him everything. Then, of course, he recants. He says he was forced into a confession. The confession's not legitimate. Tries to weasel his way out of it. Meanwhile, and again, now, John Wayne Gacy, the person, is very smart. 118 IQ. Did... Fairly well in school after he got past the hump of being absent from being unhealthy all the time. Yeah. But dumb as fuck. Because when he's sitting in his jail cell, he starts experimenting with art. And what's the first things he starts drawing? Piss pussies. <laughs> Piss pussies, probably. But factually, he starts drawing pictures of the crime scene. Pictures of the graves inside of his crawl space. He draws his house with way too graphic details on a physical piece of paper to ever recant that he didn't know that. It's detailed. They can see it. And so the cops have that. No matter what he says, that's there. The recorded confession. Now we're going to get to the point of a trial. Now, the problem with the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, even before the internet, there was no social media. The only media that was social was created by the actual media. They would do anything in their power to get more people to put eyes on their program so they could make more money from advertisers when they showed them the numbers, kind of like us with you giving us a five star review on iTunes. Do it, please. Thank you. They would get more money from advertisers based on large numbers. So they would go out of their way to do anything sensational. So of course all the local news outlets, all the national news outlets. People went insane in the media with this story. It's the biggest story at the time, naturally. It's a killer. He's a clown. 33 people are dead. They're digging up his house. But people are coming out of the woodwork. People are traveling from other places to come see the house. They're digging up the house. The smell of death's in the air. There's family members trying to see if their missing family members are in the house. And then there's just all the looky-loos who want to be a part of this big event. Disgusting. Looky-loos. I would definitely go. You know what I mean? Yeah. If oh, you had the absolutely. chance to get that smell in your nose and see something, I'd take a peek. Yeah. Ugh. What a fucking terrible goddamn smell. I but bet. that's causing a lot of problems for the trial. It's causing a lot of problems with the attorneys leading up to the trial. The worst thing about the news, when they're exhuming the bodies while he's waiting for the trial to start... They have to go one by one and identify the bodies, which is sometimes hard to do depending on the decomposition stage of the body. Ugh. So they take the bodies to the corner. The coroner starts to suss it out. When they find out and release the name, the press is already trying to get the name before it's released. 
And every single time it doesn't fail, one of those local news outlets goes and puts a camera and microphone in those poor parents' faces to get the latest John Wayne Gacy's victims interview. And it's disgusting to me. It's, yeah. I mean, anything to get money, you know? Fuck, dude. It, it, it really, it, I mean. Breaking news. Bung, tub. Bung, 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 bung. Every, bah, 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 YouTube, bah. It's a terrible <laughs> culture that came from media. That's the way print started out, is to make money and control people. And it still goes that way. And I rant about this on this all the time. And we're making media ourselves, but this is independent media. Trying to drum up ratings with the expense of people's lives is the worst. And before social media, I think it was way worse. Because that story, tonight at 10, John Wayne Gacy, victim number 19, what's their dick smell like? Every single night. Gross. So the family's having a hard time. The lawyers are having a hard time getting to the family because the families are having people stalking them at their doorsteps, cameras in their face. It's a circus. It's out of control. But the attorneys press on and come up with their cases. Now, because of this media presence, the jury has to be bussed in to the Cook County Courthouse. They can't use people inside Chicago because it's so biased, so sensationalized. They turn to Rockford, Illinois, which is 50 miles outside of town, bust the jurors in and keep them sequestered for all six weeks so there's no outside influence and they can't leak anything to the press. Mm. Now, the defense comes in for John Wayne Gacy. They do a... Switcheroo, a fakie, a bamboozle, a horn swindle, a hog swaggle. Hog swaggle? This is like a cat in a hat book right now. <laughs> <laughs> hog swaggler, boom taggler. Now they try to come to the trial making the prosecution think that they're going to use a false confession and instead go directly for the insanity plea, which never works in and of itself. So the prosecution's ready. They counter with the argument, he's evil, he's not ill. And a lot of ways they're right. It's easy to prove that John Wayne Gacy is manipulative. All the information comes out. It's being presented through witnesses, through survivors, and through Gacy's confession itself that the way he's getting access to kids that don't work for him is he's got two spotlights on his car makes them look like sirens, pulls kids over, shows them his badge, tells them they need to come with him because somebody's in trouble or they need to come check something out. And then once they get in the car, chloroforms them, gets them back to his house. But this is also the time period where the DSM-5 wasn't a thing yet. So they, it's easy to say somebody's evil mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever. They got a goddamn demon in. That's been the yeah. argument about schizophrenia forever. Yeah. So this is, you know, this is relatively new as we've covered and discussed beforehand. You know, the FBI hasn't really gotten involved in too much shit yet. Right. As far as that goes, as far as that goes is, uh, I can tell you that evil is not a real thing. Yeah. Evil is uh, a mental health disorder where people literally get sex, sexual release from killing people. Correct. And we talked about that in depth with BTK. You should go back yeah. and listen to that. He was one of the most forthcoming as far as the pleasure he got from killing. And BTK, different than John Wayne Gacy, John Wayne Gacy didn't take the stand. BTK gave a full confessional in court, murder by murder, crime by crime, talking to the judge. Now, we didn't put that in the podcast because it's like four hours long. You can find it on YouTube. You can watch the whole thing. It's cold to the bone. But it gives you an insight on where their personality switches. Now, insanity is a tough term. On top of this, too, because when you want to plead insanity, a lot of the reason why it's never going to work is because when the average person, which isn't what a juror is, it's a juror of your a jury of your peers, regular people, 16 of them from Rockford, Illinois. You don't know them, but they're normal people. They just live regular American lives. That's the entire idea. If you tell them this person's insane, well, It could be confirmed because this man has killed 33 people. That sounds insane. But when you expect to see an insane person, you expect to see crazy hair, disheveled, rambling, screaming, drooling, changing facial expressions, homeless, wild man. Ted Skazinski looking motherfucker. You know what I mean? Under the law, crazy and fucking insane means that you had, you didn't try to hide the crimes you did. That's that's the issue at hand. But really... 
if you take away laws and all that stuff, I mean, we understand we're supposed to really get rid of these people yeah. because of the things they do, whether it's a mental health disorder or not, it just mm. fucks up the gene pool of hum- humanity, period. True. Yeah, and a lot of it in these serial killers that we've covered so far and we'll cover in the future is hereditary. There is indicators. Now, we don't have a past of John Wayne Gacy's parents, but somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer, his dad was the same way as he was. Yeah. So well, John John Wayne's dad, I mean, it was an alcoholic and yes, definitely being an alcoholic and uh, it, it takes it takes a toll on your brain. Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah, you know, he could have developed uh, some kind of prefrontal lobe fuck up, right? Dr- drinking too much, probably at an early age too. You know, if you started at an early age doing drugs, yeah. You can well, I mean, they're lobe. Polish too. Polish get fucking hammered all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then he's a uh, first generation Polish. His dad was working hard. He just drank. That's what he did. But yeah, I mean, totally right with what you're saying about how this is something that should probably be cold or at least kept away from reproduction in society. What I'm saying about the insane thing is just the juror's mind. You can put the law in it all you want to, but there is a certain perception. That's why in trials, people dress a certain way. They try to present themselves a certain way. Well, the way that John Wayne Gacy did it is the way that he always did. He dressed really nice. He wanted to show himself as an upstanding member of the community and the jury could tell going from what they said after the trial that he really tried hard to present himself a certain way. And to them, they couldn't calculate that with insanity. Now that is actually an insane behavior. I mean, insanity is is repeating the same thing to failure over and over again. If you go to any fucking Southern Baptist church in the South, (laughs) just think about it like this. All them boys, all the deacons handing out the plates. Those boys are killing people. (laughs) Yeah, probably so. (laughs) That's actually, I bet there's a, if we looked at the percentage of one-off killers, that's probably a very high percentage. But what the prosecution is going for here is framing Gacy as manipulative, which again, what we're saying, easy to do. Now, in addition to the police thing, the chloroform, this is one of the details of 70s crimes that blows my mind. The contraband that he got caught with, how do you find things like chloroform before the internet was out? Where do you run into a chloroform guy? Are you just out drinking at the old L and L, and some guy's like, "Hey, you fat fuck, you look kind of weird. You into some shit?" Man, yeah, yeah, I'm into some shit there. What type of shit you into there, guy? You says sausages, chloroform, bratwursts, chloroform, Italian beefs, chloroform. I got some chloroform. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I got that chloroform. It puts him to sleep, huh? Yeah, it does. It does. So That's do the sausages you the name. The sausages. We have put uh, you get the itis, it puts you to sleep there. But I'll tell you this: the chloroform a much faster job. But you know, man, literally, I've never treated anybody for chloroform when I worked at a drug treatment facility. Yeah, ever. I don't think it's pleasurable. Yeah, man, it's so. Ugh, the so most dumb. familiar I am with chloroform is Ace Ventura, the scene where he's trying to get that ring and he's taking down all those giant football players by jumping on their back with a rag. That's basically what John Wayne Gacy is They're doing. They're on the rag? Yeah. <laughs> He's fucking ace venturing. Zero chloroform treatments to marijuana addicted people in my treatment facility. Are two. you serious? Two of they them. They claim that in they're two addicted years. to marijuana or that's what they said? They, no, nah, that's, the the, that's what the court decided. It's so dumb. But that's probably something like they're going to be in a lot of trouble, but they could say, oh, I'm just have this pot addiction and they get out of trouble, right? No, it's like uh, – Family members go, they need to go, their mental health is at stake, they are addicted to marijuana. Oh my god. Hey, I talked to some cops about that in a fucking thing one time, and they are talking about how the weed now is so strong that it's making kids have fucking crazy whatever. I'm like, oh yeah, well how many uh, deaths and overdoses are from marijuana? They're like, none. I'm like, okay. <laughs> they said none? They, they, so they said, oh my god, dumb, dude. dude. Yeah, very dumb. And we, yeah, we've talked about how that should be legalized a thousand times, so we'll skip that for this one. Now prosecution's second move is to make the jury feel the grief. They put up something that the head prosecutor calls the gallery of grief. It is a giant wooden board where he's tacked up one by one in front of them, all 33 young men in their best looking picture. So they get an idea of the, impact that John Wayne Gacy has had on the community and on these people's lives. We call Good. it a Chicago hobby horse. <laughs> yeah, I gotta put you got let me hey listen, I got a big trial coming up there next week. Now I'll bring you over here for thirty seven smoked sausages if 
I could borrow your sawhorse and jigsaw just for a weekday. I got something I got to build up here. All right. And now <laughs> he's got all these 33 kids pinned up to the board. The jury has to look at that every time they walk in the courtroom. Every argument that gets presented, it stays up the entire time. Then they start bringing in witnesses. They bring in Jeff Ringall. Jeff Ringall had gone to police about Gacy. He had been approached by Gacy hanging out in Lincoln Park and was offered some free pot. So he went to smoke weed with John Wayne Gacy. Not that abnormal in the 70s. John Wayne Gacy immediately chloroformed him on the way back to the house, chloroformed him again. When they got to the house, chloroformed him again. The next time he awoke, he was in the middle of being handcuffed to the bed. and Which ro- sounds like Lincoln Park. It actually band. was Lincoln Park. I know. Oh, they were I in Lincoln that. Park yeah. and everything that happens yeah. in Lincoln Park yes, is what exactly. influenced the band. Getting fucked in the ass dry by John Wayne Gacy but is living the through same it? as listening to Lincoln Park. But living through <laughs> it. But living through it. Living through it. And then taking your own bath. <laughs> Don't make fun of taking baths. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you come here for, folks. And now he'd been raped several times by John Wayne Gacy. He survived. He got free. Lucky Jeff Ringall has got to live with that for his whole life. Now, all the details of the whole night were hazy. He remembered bits and pieces because he had been chloroformed over and over. John Wayne just dumped him back in Lincoln Park. So what he did is became a detective himself. He flash woke up the second time that Gacy chloroformed him. He remembered seeing an exit off of a highway. He went to that exit, waited there all night until he saw a car that looked familiar. Followed that car, ended up at John Wayne Gacy's house. Remembered that, got his name off the mailbox, went directly to authorities. Now, nothing had ever come up with John Wayne. People didn't believe Jeff Ringall, but now he's one of the star witnesses in the trial. He describes the entire process of torture. Everything was by the book. The handcuffs, the fake police shit that he saw in his house, the chloroform. Typical John Wayne Gacy. That starts to paint the case way worse for Gacy. And the entire time, Gacy is 100% confident he's going to get out of this. He's talking to his attorneys. He's telling the defense attorney he circles a party in the newspaper, like a Mardi Gras party, and says to the attorney, I'll see you there, right, buddy? And the defense attorney's like, yeah, John, we'll be there together for sure. God, dude, what a cool... <laughs> Listen, cops are fucked up, too, because they're like, yeah, we can pretend like we like this guy long enough to get the information we need. Yeah. That's super manipulative, yes. just like a serial killer. Yeah, and that's another reason why he loves the cops. It's that same type of behavior. Now, you'll remember the first charge of sodomy John Wayne Gacy got caught for. The way that he did it, he had that kid beat up because he was going to come forward. He had done that again... And never got charged for it. There was a kid with the last name Miller. John Wayne Gacy had done the same thing. The handcuff trick, raped him, smashed him with dildos, tortured the poor kid. The kid survived, got away, and he came forward to police about John Wayne Gacy doing it. And the police were going to talk to him again. So he paid this other kid that worked for him, Anderson, 300 bucks to beat this kid up, to keep him from talking. So Anderson grabs the kid. Takes him out into the woods like they're going to smoke weed and hang out. Mazes the kid, gets in a fight with him, loses the fight. The kid gets away and goes to police. And that is what gave them the ammo the first time they charged John Wayne Gacy. So now they have them in court talking about that same exact offense. It's all going bad against him. So that's the prosecution's first side. Defense's first move is they frame John Wayne Gacy's life. They tell the jury about the abuse that John Wayne Gacy endured as a child. They tell the jury about nobody liking John Wayne Gacy. It comes out that John Wayne Gacy, just like Richard Ramirez, had suffered an injury to his head at the hands of a damn swing. Yep. Don't let your kids go near a swing. Ever. Nope. Two of the most infamous serial killers of all time had their brains scrambled up so hard by a damn swing that the frontal lobe injury... For sure contributed to all this. Mine was the bumper of a goddamn uh, U-Haul truck when I was skateboarding <laughs> down a hill. You just smashed into it, huh? Hard. Well, I didn't wake up for like a day and a half, man. Whoa. Fuck me up. And guess what happened? What? I'm retarded now. And I yes, can't, you are. I can't read. That's a fact. It's okay to say that when it's you, right? That's okay to say it whenever there's a retard present. Feep, 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 feep. 
Phoebe. Mount St. Phoebus. Mount St. Phoebus. What is your what is your Mount Rushmore of Phoebes? Oh my god, dude. Um fuck, I can't answer that. What's the guy's name that played Superman? Christopher <laughs> Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> And the uh, one lady that her husband had to pull the plug, but she argued with the rest of the family. Oh, man, old veggie. Do you know what I <laughs> wondered about? <laughs> Dude, here's what I was wondering. You, you know, Stephen Hawking died yesterday. Green giant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Stephen Hawking died yesterday. So we got three. Now, what happened? Yes. <laughs> yes. Stephen Hawking. One of the most brilliant minds of all time, buddy. I don't think you can call him... Retarded or a Phoebe? Uh, definitely Phoebe. <laughs> Could he walk? No. Could he talk? <laughs> <laughs> you got me there. What do you think went wrong between the chromosomes of Terry Shivo and Stephen Hawking? They had a Phoebe kid. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> we just gotta get out of this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mount Rushmore, we got four of them. We got four, ladies and gentlemen. So it takes six weeks for this trial to commence. Now, it's really not that hard of a decision. Again, Gacy is an asshole. He doesn't take the stand, but the way he carries himself is irritating to everybody. He's the smug fuck that you hate in every job you've had when you go to Walmart and you see that guy yelling at their kids. He's just a dick. And his whole personality is made up. And that's easy to see through. I've always been that way. If I see a fake motherfucker, I can smell it across the room. And I do everything I can to avoid him. A lot of people are like that. Especially this jury. They're not taking any of his sympathy stories. And it's hard to do that presented with this evidence. And it's easy to match him up to everything that happened. And when the prosecution rests guess what this slick fuck does the gallery of grief he has built in a crawl space and he takes the pictures one by one as he's delivering his closing arguments of prosecuting john wayne gacy and dropping them down into this crawl space and describes it as such and names the name and he says mercy you want to have mercy on these victims you want to have mercy on this man john wayne gacy if you want to have mercy on john wayne gacy put him to death kill him he can't go on living like this he's a danger to himself he's a danger to everybody he cannot stop couple that in with the last psychologist the defense brought when they were cross-examined they this is good as prosecution shout out to the prosecution team they made so this is when reagan was president reagan had made a nationwide law where if you're mentally ill and this is good in some ways but in this case would have been terrible if you're mentally ill they cannot hold you against your will in other words if you go to a psychiatric institute to be committed it has to be by your will they can't hold you against your will so the prosecution made the psychiatrist say if John Wayne Gacy was cl- was guilty by reasons of insanity, which is what the defense is going for. He did it, but he's insane. He had to say that he would walk free. He wouldn't be in there forever. At some point, they'd have to let him go. Yeah. And that was it. That's a wrap. If you feel sorry for John Wayne Gacy, John Wayne Gacy told the police in his confession and kept babbling on time and time again how these kids were problem kids. They were a scab on society. He would talk about how 50% of children are raised by a single parent. They grow up to repeat the same thing. And that is a problem with society that he was trying to take care of. They were all bad kids. They would all try to blackmail them. They were all drug users, all homosexuals, which none of which was true. And he had been divorced two times him damn self. He didn't take care of his first kids. He left them behind when his wife left for prison. He didn't even try to get custody, nothing. You know? He's a hypocrite, and he's full of shit about everything. And that caught up to him, finally. Yep. When they charged him with all 33 counts of murder, they gave him 12 death sentences, and for the rest of the murders, each one was a life sentence. 
So he goes to prison. Now, another funny thing um, is that last week, remember the first time he went to prison? You are like, he went to Menards. Yeah. I was like, no. This time, he did go to Menard oh. Prison. Okay. Menards. Menards, 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 Menards. 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 It's Have you ever listened to, to the world famous <laughs> Crawl Space Brothers? No. It's a cool ass folk band that just sings about killing folks. Yeah. They're Gacy themed. Yep. Well, check that out. I need to. <laughs> they're recording, man. They're a good band, but their recordings are. They just need a good producer. They need Mark. Yeah, Mark Johnson's a great producer. Mark we, Johnson is a producer. When you oh. heard the rap at the beginning of this episode, that was straight all done by Mark. He took a Burzum Dunkel Height instrumental and put the drums over it, recorded us on the top. He's pulling his headphones off because he's done. He doesn't like yeah. whenever somebody gives Our him a good. Our voices are stupid. He's like, man, guess what? I don't like when you guys talk positive about me. I'm going to keep drinking and stinking. Dr. Dre, gay. Mark Johnson, not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 he actually is gay. That's like a thing. Mark's gay? No. Dr. Dre. Is he really? Yes. He's beating and pounding dudes? Yes. Uh, That's why he's so strong now. All right. John Wayne Gacy, of course, loves prison. Every fucking minute of it. Oh, yeah. It's gay as fuck. It's gay as hell. (laughs) He's a celebrity. He gets tons of mail. Admiration. People love him. People are just one. And also, the thing is, with people like him, people like the son of Sam... If there's a serial killer out there that will correspond with you, everyone will find out about it and try to get in on it. And he'll correspond with everybody. He's got tons of time to kill. And plus, he loves the attention. This is John Wayne Gacy's end game. If you followed us from the beginning, that's all he wants is to be a successful, productive big shot. And in prison, he is. Everyone likes him. Uh, He's doing his art. He starts painting. He starts doing paintings of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Paintings of him as Pogo the Clown. Custom paintings if you'll mail in. That's how he gets all the art supplies. People will buy art supplies for him to do paintings with to get paintings. Pay him money for him. Interviews. He's a celebrity. He's loving it. Loves it. Spends 13 years in there just having the best time of all time. Suck me off. Jack me smooth. Loving every minute of it. Loving every minute of it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, He writes to Gigi Allen. How about that? A funny note that I took from the entire John Wayne Gacy thing is we've seen, everyone's seen the documentary Hated in the Nation, I hope. If you haven't, man, it is my favorite. Highly recommend Hated in the Nation. Funny story about Hated in the Nation. When I first started dating my wife, or no, nah, we have been dating for no, a while. No, you guys were married. We were married. Okay, okay, okay. We were living. All right, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you were living but in Jacksonville. We were living in Jacksonville. You <laughs> just moved up to Jacksonville. Yeah. So Buddy used to live next door in a duplex to me and my wife. We were hanging out. She knew Buddy, but she hadn't been around Buddy as much as one would be inundated with Buddy, like you guys are. So me and Buddy are in our office watching Hated in the Nation. Gigi Allen's cramming a banana up his ass. And she opens the door, sees him cramming a banana up his ass. She goes, oh, my God, I swear, it's always cramming stuff up people's asses with you guys. <laughs> and she's right. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, uh, man. And uh, that documentary, Hated in the Nation, was actually funded. The producer had John Wayne Gacy draw that infamous rendition of Gigi Allen, had posters printed from it, Sold the posters to fund getting the documentary out. We have to do a GG episode. We will. We definitely will. And now, I could not find the letter that GG Allen sent to John Wayne Gacy, but he tells me it's at the Museum of Death in New Orleans. GG Allen's brother, Merle Allen, has the biggest collection of serial killer shit. Yeah, I think he has the biggest memorabilia of serial killers. He writes, he, I don't know if he still does, but uh, he definitely donated a bunch of letters and things from serial killers to. The Museum of Death of both New Orleans and uh, Los Angeles. Very cool, very cool. It is pretty sweet. I just wanted to read this Gigi Allen. Now, keep in mind that he paints pictures of the Seven Dwarfs. He's got a thing for the Seven Dwarfs, probably because he's got that big, fat, round body. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He writes this to just as John Wayne Gacy. nose looks like his dick. (laughs) A little bulbous thing. This is John Wayne Gacy writing to Gigi Allen. Hi-ho, Gigi Allen. Thank you for your letter, which arrived tonight. I can understand you wanting to be called by your stage name, but for prison records, your name has to be what it would show on your ID, as they will expect to see something with your ID that I put on your visiting slip. 
So the first thing Donald gave me for the two addresses for you, let me know which one is proper as that's the way you will be listed so that I can get it approved. So he's trying to get Gigi to come visit him in prison, which he does. Here are the ones he gave me. Kevin M. Allen, P.O. Box 54, Hookset, New Hampshire, 03106. Why am I reading his address? We can skip that. Please give me which one appears on your driver's license. By the way, I just answered Donald's letter tonight. I had already talked to him, but your letter answered some of my questions I put to him, mainly whether or not you want to visit me so as to be a name dropper and exploit me or come to meet me as a friend. Your letter made that queer, so I need no problem. Queer? Yep, hmm. I did a real uh-huh. slip there. Yeah, I got you. I'm just going to read this regular so we can chop it out. By the way, like you being called Gigi Allen, get the spelling of my name right. It's Gacy, and there is no E in it. You fucked up the first time on your envelope. Everyone is trying to add letters to it, so fuck, pay attention, and don't let it happen again. I hope that Don told you I kid around, so take it that way. You know what I mean? Regarding what I need... They don't allow me anything in here. I'm sorry. They don't allow it in here. Besides, they wouldn't let it in anyway. Lux is a pen pal of mine for five years now. He helps me out by buying my paintings. I noticed you mentioned that you're interested in having one done. I enclosed an oil painting list. What you're looking for is listed under commission portraits. Unless you want something like what you look like for the stage, then it would just be a commission painting. See above the other one. The photo you send would have to be in color so that I can get all the colors right. All the information is listed. You mentioned portraits, so the price is listed with the instructions when it is the same for all. Please get me correct information so that I can get you on the visiting list and also let me know when you plan on coming down. Insofar as what can be sent in, Donald knows what I like to read. Any good dirty novels, XXX porno at, at its best. No color magazines, as most of the time they will stop them and return them to sender. Look forward to hearing from you. Hang in there. By the way, your statement is interestingly positive and shows you're an individual. Go for it. Later, signed JW. Now, the reason I wanted to read that is because, again, great time in prison. He is allowed to send out a list of paintings that he's already painted with a price next to him. He's allowed to sell paintings on commission. It's insane. Yeah. This is, at the time that he was caught, the number one, not of confirmed kills, but convicted for that many kills. Yeah. And, of course, he was topped by the Green River Killer. Yeah. Green River Killer is a wild boy. I think. Anyway, and then Macabre, the band, they went to meet him in jail several times. Gigi Allen went to meet him. Having a great time. Living it up. Living every minute of it. Oh, yeah. And then, finally, after 13 years, they put this son of a bitch to death. And up to the last minute, this smug fuck thought he was going to get out of the whole thing. 1994, right? That's when he was going to... Believe so. Yeah, okay. He was denied his last day of execution by the United States Supreme Court. Mark looked at me like, what the fuck? Yeah, who cares about the date? We're here to be accurate on the killing, not for quiz drilling. You know what I mean? Dude. Uh, John Wayne Gacy's last meal, 12 fried shrimp, fries, one pound of strawberries, and a bucket of KFC. That fat fuck. Never got over KFC. Insisted that it was the best chicken. Let me tell you, wrong. Very, very wrong. Number one, best fast food chicken. Popeyes. Number two, best fast food chicken. Churches. Mm, okay. Number three, best fast food chicken. Bojangles. All right. Number four, best fast food chicken. Gas station. Any gas station. Particularly the Dodge Store in Hot Springs, oh, Arkansas. Oh, my God. It's a beautiful sight. Hey, that the, would be number one, but tur- it's not a chain. No, that shit's not. incredible. The turkey legs. Whew. Yeah. And they they deep fry a turkey leg. Not in batter. You can eat it. It's healthy. It's, man. I'm going to go get one. We should go. Let's go. They we never have it. it. I, I yeah. check every night. Yeah, we'll check again tonight. Why not? You got to keep the rotation going. Hey. We can call them and tell them to go. And fire <laughs> hey, up fire up with them turkey legs, boy. Listen, this fat, disgusting fuck eats that entire thing. A bucket of chicken, 
He was probably jacking off with that grease lark. Man, y'all remember when I was the boss of KFC? I made them all call me Colonel. You know what? You could call me Colonel right now. I'm not going to go anywhere. You can say, let's go to the execution chamber. I'm not going. If you say, let's go to the execution chamber, Colonel, I'm a going. Can I tell you a good story about KFC? Go ahead. Uh, Me and my friend, we'll just say his name is Bobby. Okay. His wife had a boss that was a fucking asshole, and they were supposed to move, but... All right. For for this particular job. Yes. And when this happened... Was it at KFC? No. Oh, okay. KFC later happens in the story, though. All right. So, as they're getting ready to move, the day that they're supposed to leave, the boss calls and says she's got to stay another week after they packed everything up in a truck. Fuck. So, me and my friend Bobby, we go to a KFC Taco Bell conjoined... Fucking oh, yeah. theater of delicious. Yeah, what a wild concept. We each of us eat 12 goddamn Doritos Locos Tacos, a whole bucket of KFC Original. What? It stopped. It stopped. It stopped. It's all right. We, we, I heard the click, so. Hey. Hey. Chow my bung. Time for bed. Each of us eat 20. Yeah. Let me restart that. Okay. Ready? Oh, what a wild concept. Three, two. And what a wild concept. So we eat 20 goddamn Taco Bell Doritos Locos Tacos. Each or total? Total. Now, let me just, one second. I don't want to derail your story, yeah. but fat fucking America. I understand they're owned by the same people, but. That's sour cream in it, too. We just get to this point. <laughs> we get to the point where KFC, successful by itself. Yeah. Taco Bell, successful by itself. Maybe in the same area, they won't do as well as if you cram them both together. Yeah, you might as well get you a cheesy gordita crunch. The original recipe, cram it in there. You know what's the funniest thing about the Taco Bell KFC conjoinment at that restaurant? Get Nashville hot chicken strips and shove them in a taco. That's funny. It's good. But think about this, and you'll know it when I say it. In our town of Hot Springs, Arkansas, a tiny town, there's that one where they're combined, and then five miles down the road, there's each standalone restaurant right next to each other in the same parking lot. KFC by itself, Taco Bell by itself, five miles down the road, KFC Taco Bell in the same building. Yeah. Just cramming it in there like you boys did with those 20 tacos. And then we ate a whole bucket of chicken. A whole bucket of the Colonel's original. And then... You gazed it. The next day, we took three fucking pressure-washing-ass fucking laxatives. Whoa. Then chugged them with... And you didn't shit before that? No, no, no. Chugged them with fucking coffee. Woo! Then took his dog's turds, okay. my dog's turds, put them in that exact <laughs> same KFC bucket from the night before. Yeah. Then we both shit in the same bucket. Woo! Then it, but the, but we trash bag wrapped it around the KFC bucket, tied it up, and then threw it on this dude's car. Man, that's the old Colonel's commode. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> this motherfucker called the cops. The boss called the cops. Yeah. And nobody could do shit. No, you can't prove that. We did shit to his car. He could do shit about it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's an incredible story there, buddy. Uh, <laughs> so John Wayne Gacy goes down after this final meal for injection. That's the method, lethal injection. Funny enough, when they went to kill John Wayne Gacy, they had a really tired time with the injection. They put the needle in his arm, the IV drip. Once they put the last chemical in, the one that kills, it all solidified and wouldn't drip down the tube. So it took him 18 agonizing minutes for them to get that stuff crammed in his body and die. Wow. Last words by John Wayne Gacy. Kiss my ass. God damn. He lived hard and he died hard, man. What a piece of shit. Good riddance, you fat fuck. Yeah. Interesting connection to John Wayne Gacy. Now, we talked about the kid that beat the shit out of John Wayne Gacy with wrestling. Remember yep. yeah, that yeah, kid yeah. went on to work for John Wayne Gacy for a year. Now he had tons of kid employees. He only confirmed killed three of his employees. 
what I always had a hard time figuring out is who he chose to kill and not to kill. He had conflicts with them all the time, argued he was an asshole by all accounts. But one in particular that I'm not going to give you the full backstory on, if you're a new listener, I'm going to challenge you to go back and listen to our episode on the Chicago Ripper crew. They were responsible for six brutal deaths in a guy's attic with a homemade altar to Satan with body parts used in satanic ceremonies. Legit, not satanic panic. It really happened. And, and there was he, a, also a retard involved. Yeah. So that guy, the main guy, go back and listen because he worked for John Wayne Gacy. Now, a lot of people think he was a disciple of John Wayne Gacy or remember last episode, very likely that he had someone to help him commit all these crimes. An accomplice. Could have easily been him. Could have easily been anybody. Yeah, the old pig slayer. And that's John Wayne Gacy, man. Terrible person. Came Mm. into this world abused. You know, a good lesson to learn from serial killers is you you don't ever know what people are going through. You don't know what's happened in their life, how they were born. I understand as a culture we're kind of moving beyond bullying, but it still happens. Yeah, we just did it a couple times this episode. Well, we are bullies. And that's a fault that we have. We sometimes are... Are you admitting to that? Well, to each other, for sure. Yeah, to each other. For we've sure. bully pushed people that we don't know. Yeah. You, we've done the but old. It's all been Parker a good time. We, yeah, it's like, all in fun. But here's the thing: we guys. never hated them. You, yeah, right. But just be careful when you're dealing with society. If someone's a little bit different, don't pick at them because the rage that harbors within someone whose brain is off like that that could definitely be an ingredient of serial killer stew that comes out in them down the line. So be careful. Treat people kind. Be good to the world. Did you fucking hush me? You're a fucking bully. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Guys, thank you so much. Like I was telling you at the beginning of the podcast, patreon.com backslash death metal dicks. Any amount of support helps us tremendously. If you don't like that, you can use PayPal to donate to us. Death metal dicks at gmail.com. We thank people on a particular tier every single episode because they are helping us produce this podcast so much they're all getting shirts they're all on the team they're all contributing to the forum we love interacting with everyone especially these guys big shout out and thank you to bobby henderson thank you to matt mess thank you to ryan parker thank you to casey gaden the song we chose this week was for the third time gore rotted to catch a killer we're gonna do one song for a three-part series from now on. It makes it a lot easier. Yeah. So you got to take a listen to that song, which has got elements of different serial killer cases in it, but it's got a big chunk of John Wayne Gacy right up top. It's a great song. And it's got big chunk and fucking riffs. Big chunk and fucking riffs. Big chunk and fucking riffs. We've had a great time with you. As always, we want to sign you out with a positive affirmation for yourself and Satan. Satan is worshiping yourself, giving into the flesh, dismissing spirituality, Moving forward with the idea in life that you are responsible for every move along your path. Once you control every single thing that you can, you will see the positive impact that Satan and yourself can have for you. Thank you for tuning in to Death Metal Dicks, the three-part series. We'll be back next week with a crazy crime. Serve Satan. Eat ass. Touch a goat, scroat. See you next time. Hell, KFC. KFC. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Thanks, YouTube. Ciao, my fucking butt.